All right. Okay, so we had a little hiccup. We're back on live, right? We're good. Yeah, we are <laughs> so, good. Cool. So I'll do a, I'll, I'll do a quick little intro again. So today we're going to be talking about comparison, um, comparison as it relates to just general life and school and academics, um, just as a teenage girl, but also in terms of how it can affect your athletic performance, confidence, and I'm sure Erica, as always, uh, you'll be able to dive into how it affects physical performance as well. So yeah, let's get into it. Yes, yes, that's such a such a good point. And I'm happy to go into that. But one thing that comes up for me with comparison is it is unproductive if you're trying to improve yourself. <laughs> and everyone listening is a, an athlete and you want to get better in your physical performance or mental performance. And when you're constantly looking around at what others are doing, then you're taking away from the actionable steps you can take to work on yourself as a player and as a human. So just keep that in mind. It is really, really unproductive for you. And it also can be demoralizing. Like you can look around and see other other people crushing it. And you're like, well, why, why am I struggling at this? Or why can't I be like that? And why are they better at this? But instead of looking at other people's accomplishments, look at how far you've come, but then look at, okay, where do I need to go next? And how can I focus things back onto myself so I can get to where I want to go and accomplish my goals? Absolutely. Yeah. I like how you said like the word focus, right? Because when you're comparing, right, you're, you're taking the focus off of yourself and you're putting it onto somebody else. And even what makes that even more unproductive is that you are, you're, you're putting all the negative onto yourself. So you're like, they have all of these great qualities and I have all these negative qualities. So you're amplifying your negative and their positive, which is just unrealistic and unproductive, right? And so I always like to use the, um, there's a picture of Michael Phelps um, in the Olympics. I'm not sure what year it is, but a picture of Michael Phelps swimming and then his competitor next to him. And Michael Phelps was, was behind the majority of the race. And then at the end, the other guy turned to look at Michael Phelps and Michael Phelps ended up winning the race because he was focused on the finish line and his competitor was focused on Michael Phelps, right? And so that's like a, a literal kind of uh, example there of how comparison takes all of your focus and put takes it off of you and puts it onto somebody else. And the thing is, is that with comparison, is it, it, it takes things out of our control right? Because you can't control what other people are doing. So why put your focus somewhere where you can't control it? Right? So, but it's easy to, it's easy to say, don't compare yourself to other people. But that's the hard thing that I was talking about on the other, you know, when we started was, it's, it's really hard. It's can be really hard if you're stuck in comparison to get out of it. Right? So I don't know. I mean, for you, I'm thinking back to when I was you know, playing. And the thing for me, the hardest thing was comparing myself to other people in the recruiting process, right? Because I didn't, I, we didn't have social media, but it was like the recruiting process. My teammates getting recruited before me, getting emails, getting looks, and I wasn't. And so mine, for me, the time I remember myself being most in comparison when I was playing was definitely like in that, you know, middle school, high school, like recruiting stage of my life. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. And I think like the recruiting issue is a, a big one. And you see like as a young athlete, you see all of your friends posting that commitment yeah. post like, oh, I committed to this D1 school and they're wearing like the hoodie and all that. And they got the college colors and it's like, dang, like when am I going to commit or am I going to be able to go to a school that good? And you're you're just looking around at, at everyone else and it, you mentioned that it's it's out of your control what other people are doing. And it's it's a very dark hole to go down because there's always going to be people who are, quote unquote, better than you yeah. and who might be faster than you or stronger than you or more technically sound than you. And if you go through life thinking that 
that's not going to happen, then you're sadly mistaken. And you're always going to be like, well, like, you know, I'm not as good as this because, you know, they're better than me here, but you have your own gifts too. So bring back the focus to yourself and be so focused on what you're good at and what you're working to improve that comparison doesn't even matter to you. And when you do see other people, quote unquote, crushing it, you can use like your comparison to them as more of like collaboration. So as an example, like when I see amazing professionals like Shay uh, crushing it and she she's kind of in my space, like we work with a similar audience, like when she's crushing it or when other strength coaches are crushing it, instead of me being like, oh my gosh, like I'm not doing as well as them, I use it as collaboration. Like, hey, like, how are you guys doing this? What skill sets are you cultivating here to be good at videos or blogging or whatever? And something that can help me become better. So use other people's successes to help you get to where you want to go and to pick their brain and just create this awesome community of, of collaboration. So if you have like a friend or a teammate who is getting faster, ask them what their workouts are. Maybe ask them to speed, speed train with them and race against them so that you're pushing yourself. So that's just one way to like really take action with it and turning it, turning it into something positive for yourself. Yeah. I love that you said like, if you see someone crushing it, like, like collaborate with them on, on one of my group calls uh, yesterday, one of the softball players asked like how, like my teammates doing really good in batting and I'm not like, how can I ask her for help? And I was like, just ask her. Right. Like just ask her, say, hey, you're doing really good. I would love some tips and some feedback. And the thing is, is that when you ask people to collaborate, when you ask people for help, it they're they're excited. Like people want to be asked for help because it means, oh, I'm doing good. Right. It kind of toots their horn a little bit. Um, but I love some of the strategies um, that you said, and I want to get into a little bit as well. But going going even deeper like the 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 deepest most inner strategy you can have with comparison is to not necessarily care what people think but to care more about yourself than what other people think of you right and that takes a lot a lot a lot of inner work cuz think about it if you aren't very confident in yourself then it's going to be really easy for you to get pulled into comparison thinking i'm not good enough she's better than me blah 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 but if you're really, really confident in yourself, yeah, you still may compare yourself to other people, but you'll never let that downgrade your own self-worth and, and confidence. So that's like the, the ultimate solution, in my opinion, is the more confident you become, the less you compare yourself to other people. The more confident you become, the less you compare and the more you celebrate other people. Right? Like if I wasn't confident, I wouldn't be doing these calls with you, Erica. Like I would instead be sitting watching your stuff being, why is Erica so great and I'm not? Right? And so, and that's honestly, I used to be like that. I remember it was when I first started my soccer training business and I just, I had, you know, my Instagram following was starting to heat up a little bit. Um, and then I had, there was a girl that I used to play with um, and she had just started her own soccer training business as well. And she just started her Instagram and she was kind of messaging me, asking me for tips. And I was like, this is cool. I want to help her. And then I looked a couple weeks later and her Instagram like blew up. And I was like, what the heck, man? I was like, why is she doing so much better than me? Like, what am I doing wrong? She's blah, blah, blah. And I just got totally into this like self-sabotage comparison. And so what I did and this strategy helped me and it's maybe a temporary strategy, but it helped me in the moment. And is what I would suggest is if you find yourself comparing to someone on social media and you just, you can't get out of that, like mute them or just unfollow them. Not, not forever, but just maybe give yourself like a few weeks. Like that's I've what I did. I've done that before. <laughs> yeah. Like so I do it. I've done it multiple times. I'll just, and it's not like forever, but I'll, I'll, I'll mute them for, you know, a couple weeks just so I can kind of like get out of my own head and just focus on me. You know, and so doing that can be really useful as it relates to social media. I love that. And I think that's a good short term strategy for sure. Like it's I thank you for sharing that. And that that's something like I've definitely done in the past and very similar situation with, 
you know, just seeing like other trainers who were like doing the same thing as me. And I was like, well, what do I like have to offer? Like, but then I was like, you know, like, I'm just going to focus on like my training because like what I bring to the table is very different than what this girl brings to the table. Like, yeah, we do the same thing and have similar methods, but people come to me because they want to be with me Mm -hmm. and like my personality or whatever attracts people to, to my services. So I had to really regain that, like Shay said, that, that self-focus. And another tip for that is if you find yourself like scrolling through TikTok or just catching yourself, like really comparing and looking around at other people, then take a moment and ask yourself, okay, what can I do in this moment to shift from that person back to myself? So can I go cook a healthy meal? Can I go do a workout that's going to make me feel better? And Shay mentioned confidence. So go from comparison to boosting your own confidence. What are some things you can do in that moment to just quickly boost your confidence again? So just, yeah, again, it just comes back to just writing your own story and focusing on you and continuing to improve you. And I actually, I caught myself last week because I was, I was looking around to like just some other like amazing, like soccer coaches and like people in sports science. And I'm like, dang, like, I'm just like not into the science. Like, I'm just like not good at this data stuff. Like I'm just not there yet, but it, pushed me to learn and to really sift through the literature. And yeah. not only am I getting better, but it's it's serving my athletes and giving them the most up-to-date research. So I use that that moment of a little bit of insecurity to start doing research on my own and to just get better at my craft. Yeah, I, I love that where it's just like once you catch yourself, so first you have to be aware that you're in comparison. But once you catch yourself, it's like what's one very small, simple thing that I can do to, to put the focus back onto myself. I love that. And even, you know, before that is maybe, um, or not before that, but just another kind of strategy. We talked about focusing on your strengths, um, which like maybe you take five minutes and you write down, you know, all of the things you're good at so that when you're feeling not so great about yourself, you can kind of refer back to that piece of paper or those notes in your phone where you're just like, oh, you know what? Like, I am really good at these things. And no, you don't have to be the best at everything. Like you're, no one's the best at everything. LeBron James isn't the best at everything. Alex Morgan isn't the best at everything. Like be the best at your strengths and that's, and then don't worry about anything else, right? Like continue to cultivate your weaknesses, but really focus on your strengths and play into your strengths. And then one thing I wanted to add with social media, um, which I'm really, really fired up about recently yeah. is instead of, instead of, and, and I'm a very competitive person. So I don't mean, you know, when I say instead of competing and comparing, let's celebrate other, other people, let's celebrate other women that are doing awesome things. Right. So maybe you do have to follow or unfollow or, un, or mute somebody and that's okay. But maybe instead of comparing yourself, you write a comment and say, Hey, you're doing awesome things and just watch how that changes you. Watch how you go from, oh my gosh, I'm not good enough. Look what they're doing. And then you write that comment and you're like, you know what? I can I can give them props. And by giving them props, obviously you're boosting them up, but you're also going to boost yourself up in the process and take you out of the mindset from comparison and competition to um, celebration and collaboration, which I think as women, as girls, we all need to be doing much more of because our backs are, you know, everything is, is against us. And so we have to take it upon ourselves as individuals to boost each other up, to celebrate other people, because when one of us wins, we all win. And so can you celebrate people more often? And that comes back to the abundance mindset that we've discussed before. And there's, there's enough people to, to go around for us to mentor, or, you know, there's enough colleges for you to go to, to play. Everyone has a college for them, or there, there's enough goals to be scored. Like maybe you didn't score this game, but you'll score the next game or the next game. So just really approach it from that, that abundance mindset and realize that you are the power. Okay. So you have all these amazing opportunities. You have all these talents that you bring to the table and you're going to have your time to shine. And it's, it's not ever going to, to be a perfect journey. And there will be times when you fall short and others rise. But like she said, just 
just celebrate it. And that that feeling you get on the inside when when you celebrate others and you have that abundant mindset, it just like fills you up. It's just mm. it's just like a good way to go through life. And honestly, it, it's not going to end. Like it's going to be a continuing thing when you guys go into graduate school or into your career. Mm, I love that. It's all about like the energy, right? The positive energy. If you're you know, in the comparison, it's just this low, low vibe, negative energy, right? But when you're celebrating other people, it's this positive energy, abundance energy. And just because someone else is successful doesn't mean you can't be successful too. There's enough success. There's enough goals. There's enough colleges. There's enough money. There's enough of everything in the world for everyone to have it, right? So just because someone has it or is better than you at it doesn't mean that you can't also have that. So I love that. I, I love it. And I'm glad we we brought that up. Before we go, I know you had mentioned like the um, comparing to others in terms of physical performance. Mm-hmm. And, and this is something that's really common, especially with like middle and high school athletes. And like the most common situation is like not being as fast as the girl next to you. And sometimes it is actually um, just a, a natural limitation. Maybe uh, a kid's at a different point in their growth spurt and their their legs aren't as long or their stride length isn't as long. And, and that's a, a big factor in speed and how fast you are. So just really understanding like where you're at in your uh, physiological growth journey and understanding like, look, like this is just a storm I need to weather right now. Um, I can't force my body to grow longer legs at this point. Um, So just be aware of that. But if you're in like late high school, you're done your growth spurt and maybe you see yourself still slower than your other teammates. And it, it just comes back to like, well, what action are you taking to get faster and to get to the point that you want to get to? Are you speed training two times a week? Are you really building up your strength year round? Are you actually working towards it? So always, always come back to taking action and doing so consistently. I love that. Yeah. And realize we're all, we're all built different, right? We all have different bodies. So love your body and use it to the best of your ability. And, and yeah, I love, I love how, that's a that's a great place to end. So I think this was this is an amazing conversation, and hopefully, um, every time I talk about it, like you know, the things that I teach and talk about and coach, it's stuff that I need to hear as well, and stuff I'm working on as well. So I know I I got a lot out of it. I feel lighter and better, and hopefully, everyone listening.